let's talk about the golden rule. So in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. When Jesus was given his sermon on the mount, he gave us this golden rule about how we are to treat others the same way you want them to treat you. Imagine how beautiful life on earth would be if we lived by this golden rule given by Jesus to treat others how you want to be treated. Not treat others how they treat you, but to treat others like we know we ourselves want to be treated. If I want to be respected, treat others with respect. If I want to be shown compassion, show compassion. If I want to be treated nicely, treat others nicely. If I want to be treated with compassion, mercy, grace, love, patience, and understanding, then I should treat others with those same sentiments. In doing so, I am modeling not only how I want to be treated by others, but how we are to treat one another. Rather than doing to others what they have done to us or giving them what they may deserve, we are to treat them the way we want them to treat us. Jesus tells us that in this golden rule, it sums up the law and the prophets. What this tells us is the golden rule has always been basic to God's principle message to how we are to treat one another. Jesus simply crystallized the message into a notable precept. Later in Matthew, when asked to identify the greatest commandment, Jesus responded, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. You see, Jesus knows the human heart, and it is selfish. In fact, in the preceding verse before giving the golden rule, verse 11, he describes human beings as innately evil. Verse 11, he says, if you then being evil, Jesus' golden rule gives us a standard by which naturally selfish people can gauge their actions by actively treating others the way they themselves would like to be treated. This golden rule spoken by Jesus condenses the entire Old Testament into this single principle taken from Leviticus 19.18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Again, that people are naturally lovers of self, and the golden rule uses the natural human flaw of selfishness as a place to start in how to treat others. You see, people universally demand respect, love, and appreciation, whether they deserve it or not. Jesus understood this desire and used it to promote godly behavior. Do you want to be shown respect? then respect others. Do you crave a kind word? Then speak words of kindness to others. It is more blessed to give than to receive. The golden rule is also part of the second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. As Christians, the golden rule is a mark of true Christianity. As Jesus tells us, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In fact, Christians cannot claim to love God if they don't actively love other people as well. As it tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, if someone says, I love God, it hates his brother or sister is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. We are to treat other people with love, dignity, and respect because you would want them to treat you with the same love, dignity, and respect. However, make no mistake, the golden rule is not a muzzle. The golden rule is not intended to lead us to ignore sin. It is not something that can be used to drastically revise or cancel other teachings in the word of God. There are some people who try to invoke the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you as an argument against sin being identified. Most frequently, you hear this line of thought regarding gay marriage. The reasoning is essentially this. I would not want people to tell me who I can and cannot marry. Therefore, I should not be telling other people who they can and cannot marry. Now, it's true that people do not like being told what they can and cannot do, but this is not the golden rule. 
The golden rule is not keeping your beliefs to yourself because you don't want others pushing their beliefs on you. God's word instructs us to speak the truth in love. The word of God commands us to always be ready to give a gentle and respectful defense for what we believe. We are to preach the word. Jesus himself taught people to go and sin no more. So clearly the golden rule is not that of accepting and compromising with the world on matters contrary to God's truth and sin. The concept of the golden rule is simple. We are to do to others what we would want them to do to us. Treat other people with love, dignity, and respect because you would want them to treat you with love, dignity, and respect. And by no means is the golden rule a muzzle, God's truth and sin. The golden rule is not intended to lead us to ignore sin. The golden rule is doing to others what you would want them to do to you. If you were living a life controlled by depraved and destructive sin that, according to God's word, leads to eternal separation from God, would you want people to tell you everything is okay or to tell you the truth? Before I came to faith in Christ, I was a slave to sin. I was on the path of eternal separation from God, and I didn't want to hear anything related to the gospel. And if this warped understanding of the golden rule had been applied, I would still be dead in my trespasses in sin. Instead, I am now eminently and eternally grateful for those who declare the truth to me, the truth about my sin and its consequences and the forgiveness, deliverance, and salvation that is available and offered through Christ Jesus. Amen. One, everyone is struggling with something and everyone benefits from the love and kindness of others. And this means that we should fundamentally understand that if I want mercy and compassion, then others also want mercy and compassion. And we need to show mercy and compassion to others. Too often we seek mercy for ourselves and cast judgment on others. That is not how God wants things to be. Jesus also in his Sermon on the Mount said, Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. You see, this verse takes the golden rule one step further. It teaches us that God is going to hold us responsible for the way that we treat others. If we show compassion and mercy to others, we will be shown compassion and mercy. If, however, we are judgmental and critical of others, we should expect to be treated the same way by God. There are many verses in the Bible that teach us not to be judgmental. Luke 6.37 says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. For judgment will be merciless to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And Romans 2.1 says, Therefore, you have no excuse, every one of you who passes judgment, for in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. However, though we are told, do not judge, lest you be judged, don't mistake or confuse being judgmental with judging. They are two different things. When Jesus is talking about, do not judge, lest you be judged, he is talking about being judgmental or judging someone or a matter without truth or facts. It is judging for things and matters based on our prejudices, our conceived biases, whereas Jesus tells us, we are to judge a tree by the fruit it bears. If I see you steal, I can judge you as a thief. If you lie, you are a liar. If you commit adultery, you are an adulteress, and so on. We are even told in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life. So understanding Jesus is not talking about judging by truth, but that of being judgmental. And one of the ways that we can become less judgmental is by acknowledging that we are all sinners. Left to our own devices, none of us would be found worthy to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is only through the redemptive work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that a relationship with God is even possible. Consider the following three verses. Romans 3, chapter 23 through 24. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemptive work, through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Titus 3, 5. 
he saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 5 verses 8 through 11, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So the golden rule is to treat all like you want to be treated, and more so to treat all as God has treated you. If you want to be treated nicely, treat someone else nicely. Treat someone else nicely because of the grace you have been given. So that regardless of how you feel in any given situation, you can offer grace like the grace God extends to you daily. You're probably thinking that sometimes you are nice, very nice, and in return you get contempt from some people. Unfortunately, this can and will happen. People don't always treat you the way they want to be treated or the way you want it to be treated. But that doesn't mean that you can stop doing the right thing. Don't let someone pull you into their web of uncaring harshness. Two wrongs never make a right, and vengeance does not belong to us. So let me end today's sermon with this scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. May God bless and keep you, my friends, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 